Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want you to take a moment right now and just, just take a praise break. Take a moment and take a praise break with all of the mess that is going on in our world today. Not, not only in our nation, but globally in the world. I want you to pause for just a brief moment and take a praise break. Go ahead and tell God thank you. You're not thanking him for the situation. You're thanking him in spite of all that the mess is that is going on. So tell God, thank you. God, I thank you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, scoot up, pull up. Listen, get that, listen, come on. Scoot up and pull up and listen up and open up that mouth and give God some praise right now and tell God, thank you. Tell him you love him, you thank him, and you trust him. In spite of all of the mess, all of the mess that's going on, tell the Lord, Lord, listen, I love you. Lord, I thank you, and Lord, I trust you. In other words, you're not going to allow the adversary to deter you or cause you to detour in any way. So just bless God for a moment. The Bible says, listen, he inhabits the praises of his people. So go ahead and praise him for a moment right now. Just that, Lord, come on, lift your hands, open up, look up and sit up, and say, Lord, I just bless you right now. I bless you because you are the sovereign God. Listen, you got this, you got me, and everything is going to be what? All right. Praise God. Now, don't you feel better as a result of that? Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph because guess what? We are going to triumph irrespective of what goes down and what takes place. If you stay in faith with him, you're going to triumph. Praise God. Well, welcome back on another Bible study night. This Wednesday night, we're still in the book of Revelation. And listen, the last, the last chapter, we're on the last chapter. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I believe it's really going to be, listen, it's going to be good tonight. It's going to be exciting. So praise God. Go ahead and uh, break out your Bible if you have it in book form. If you don't have a Bible in book form, listen, your iPhone your flip phone, hey, Samsung has brought the flip phone back, okay, your iPad, whatever you got, go ahead and open up with us to that 22nd chapter. And of course, that 22nd chapter is deals with the New Jerusalem, uh, that perfect age. Are, are you with me? Because keep in mind, when, when John was writing, over in the first chapter of the book of Revelation, he were to write the things in which he saw, which was Christ in the midst of the, listen, the candlesticks, the things which he saw, listen, the things which what are and the things which shall be hereafter. The things which are was the church age in chapters two through, yeah, two and three deals with the seven churches. We're still in the church age, glory to God, and then picks up from chapter four, the scene that, that's in heaven, because keep in mind the, the rapture is the next event that's going to take place, which can take place at any time, and then we, you, you, we move on, listen, from the rapture, then there's the seven-year tribulation period. Are you hearing me? And then after the seven-year tribulation period, of course, the second coming, the, 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 the kingdom age, and then the perfect age. So let's, let's pick up. We, we completed verse through verse 3 on last week, and so we started at verse number 4. But just, just to kind of back up a little bit and recapitulate a few things, look at verse 3. And there shall be no more curse. Why? Because we're going to be in that perfect age. There should be no more curse, but the throne of God, listen, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, okay? And his servants shall serve him. Then we move into that fourth verse of that 22nd chapter. And they shall see his face, and they, listen, and they shall see his face. That shows that intimate relationship, and, 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 and if you remember when we were in the 14th chapter, just go ahead to chapter 14 right quick, and look at verse number one. My God, and let's, let's read that. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, hear this now, listen, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Wow. And then when you go to the 22nd chapter, which we're in, watch this, verse 4, and they shall see his face. Listen, and his name shall be in their foreheads. God, that, that, that refers to ownership, 
uh, uh, and this is, this is going to be all believers. Listen, can you imagine? And they shall see his face, and they shall see his face. My God. With all, as all believers, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And that's going to be with all believers. My God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you recall, over in Genesis, listen, the, the first inhabitants didn't want to see his face. They were trying to, listen, remember Adam and Eve? They, they ran from God. So the first inhabitants, they hid their face. But watch this here. In this new Jerusalem, in this perfect age, glory to God, that's going to come. Are you with me? What, what's going to happen? Listen, we're going to see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. Then verse 5, and there shall be no night there. And there shall be no night there. Listen, and they need no candle. You know, being in the state of Florida, you know, every so often a hurricane usually comes through the state. It's usually more down south than it is up on the north end. And, and, but those of us who've been through a few hurricanes, we've seen where we've had the blackouts where there was a loss of power for a few days or something. I don't know what's been the longest length of time that in the state that, that uh, uh, a very uh, one particular city has been without power but the fact is that guess what in this new Jerusalem in this perfect age that is to come hear this hear this there shall be no night there in other words even at night it's going to be as bright as day are you hearing me even at night it's going to be as bright as day and there shall be no night there. My God. Listen, and they need no candle. R remember what I said just previously? You know, when, when we've had a loss of power here in, in whatever city in the state and, you know, uh, uh, been without power for two or three days, whatever, for those of us who have generators, you know, we, we can start our generator and, and we'll have at least a, a minimal amount of power. But, 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 but hear this, beloved. There won't be any need. There, there won't be any blackouts in the New Jerusalem. There won't be any blackouts in the perfect age. There won't be any hurricanes or tornadoes or pestilences or any of that in that perfect age. Because, see, there's not going to be any more curses. Listen, you won't have any need for lighting a candle or having a flashlight. Why? Let's, let's read on. He says, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. Why? Why? It tells us in that, that latter part of that verse. For the Lord God gives them light. Hallelujah. In other words, he is the source of light. Are you hearing me? And they shall reign, how long? Forever and ever. Wow. The servants of God in the new age, we're going to reign forever and ever and ever. My God, my God, my God. Wow. Because if you look, look at verse 3 again. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb. My God. Listen. Shall what be in it? My God. And his servants shall serve him. We're going to reign forever and ever and ever. Then let's go to verse 6. And he said unto me, and he said unto me, these things are faithful and true. When you, when, in that we have been studying in this book of Revelation, when you read some of the things that we've read in here, you know, all of this seems somewhat incredible or, should I say, hard to believe to the finite mind. Are you with me? But listen to what John says. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. In other words, the things that we have been studying, they are faithful and they are true and they're going to come to pass. And you're going to see it if provided you stay in faith to meet him. Glory to God. And he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and true. My God. It's, 
it's all, it's, you, you can't even wrap your mind around a place where you won't need any candles. There won't be any need for, listen, for the sun, sun or the moon. Why? Because God is going to be the source of light. Listen, the resurrected Christ is going to be the source of the light. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The triune God is going to be the source of the light. And listen, and we, listen, and we will be light as well. God's presence, God's glory. I mean, when you, when you think about all of this, it's, 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 it's awesome, beloved. It's awesome. And these things are faithful and true. Let's read on. And the Lord God, listen, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel or his messenger, because that's how it should have been translated, sent his messenger to show unto his servants. Hear this. To show unto his servants what? To show them what? The things which must shortly be done. My God. In other words, immediately after the rapture, immediately after the rapture, he's, w w w the, you got to understand the time frame of the things in which he's speaking of here. And he's not speaking of John's day, but he's rather speaking of the setting of the vision and the time frame of the things which, listen, which has not come yet, but will come. <laughs> Glory to God. So what are you saying? I'm simply saying, guess what's next? The rapturing of the church, where the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord. What? in the air. So, uh, so after the rapture of the church then, from that point, which is, which is, what, is what is meant here by John, uh, th these things that we're reading now are going to shortly be done. My God, hallelujah, glory to God. Aren't, aren't you looking forward to that? Now, of course, the church will be in, listen, the church will be in heaven. And, 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 and the world will have gone through the tribulation period. And, and, and immediately after that, huh, the second coming, are you with me, beloved? The, the second coming, uh, the millennial reign, are you with me? Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. And then from the millennial reign of the kingdom age into the perfect age. My God, it's going to be in sequence, just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Are you with me? Let's read on. Verse 7. He says, Behold, I come what? Quickly. And, and, and this has more to do with his, his manner of coming. He says, Behold, I come quickly. Mm -mm 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 -mm. In other words, referring to the second coming at the Battle of Armageddon, his second coming when he comes with the saints. Are you with me, beloved? And it, notice what it says here. Blessed is he who what? Keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. This is the only book in the world that gives you a preview of the future. And yet, it is one of the least read books. Hear what I just said. This, the book of Revelation is the only book that gives you a preview of the future. And yet the book of Revelation is one of the least read books. So the question is, why is it not read by many believers? And you ought to be studying and reading this book more so than any other book within the Bible, within the word of God. Why, why is that? Why is that? Because it's a preview of what's going to take place in the future. And one of the reasons that a lot, a lot of believers don't read the book of Revelation because they I can't understand it. It's hard. L listen, listen there, there's a blessing associated with this because if you go with me to Revelation chapter 1, let's, let's go to the first chapter of the book of Revelation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And look at, look at verse, let me start reading it. I'll start reading it, verse 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him, what? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, what? John, listen, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. In other words, re referring to the visions and the symbols in which John saw. But now look at verse 3. 
Blessed, hear this, blessed is he who reads and they who hear the words of this prophecy. In other words, a, a blessing is pronounced upon those who what? Read, listen at this, and they who what? Hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Why? For the time is at hand. In other words, the beginning of the fulfillment of these things, which starts with the church. Are you with me? In chapters 2 and 3. Let, let's read that again. Blessed. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be blessed? Blessed is he who reads this prophecy. Well, start reading the book of Revelation. Listen, if, you, if this is your first time tuning in and you hadn't been following along with us, follow along with us. Listen, blessed is he who reads. And he who hears the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written. In other words, obeying the admonitions that are given in the word of God. Are you with me? That God promises a blessing for the time is at hand. My God. Glory to God. So now let's go back to the 22nd chapter. I want you to be able to see the correlation there. I want you to see that. Let's, let, listen, go back to verse 7. He says, behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. In other words, this is referring to the second coming now, which has to do with the height of Armageddon, okay? And he says, blessed is he who keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. It gives you a preview into the future. People are wondering what's going to happen. It, and, and, and we see the world in a mess. America is in a mess. The White House is in a mess. The church house is in a mess. We can go on and on and on. Our schools are in a mess. Are you hearing me? But I want you to know there's coming a day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's coming a day that God's going to clean up the mess. Are you hearing me, beloved? Huh? There's going to be a remake. There's going to be what God intended from the beginning when Adam made the mess in the garden and the mess passed upon all. For all have sinned. Are you with me? And, and, and I want you to know the mess is going to be cleaned up by God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen. So he says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the saying of this prophecy. And every believer ought to be studying the book of Revelation. Every believer. Every believer. Every believer. Let's, let's, let's read on. So there, there, there's, there's, there's a blessing for keeping the truth of this book. Let's read on. Verse 8. And I, John, and I, John, saw these things. My God. Listen to this. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. I saw them. I heard them. Listen. And when I heard, had heard and seen, what, is, what was his response? Notice what John did. He fell down and worshiped before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. In other words, John had made the same mistake twice. Are you with me? Because he, listen, he shouldn't have done, hear what I'm going to say. And I, John, saw these things and, listen, and heard them. And when I had heard and when I had seen, I fell down before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Now, I'm going to help you out here. Go to Revelation chapter 1, and let's look at verse 17, because this is, I want you to see something here. Revelation 1, and look at verse 17. It says, and when I saw him, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, because John thought he was going to die. Look, let's read on. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, fear not. In other words, in short, the Lord was telling John, Don't fear, you're not going to die. Because notice what he says. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. In other words, John thought he was going to die. Because keep in mind, in, in that first chapter, he was to write the things which he saw. What did he see? He saw Christ in the midst of the, the candlesticks. Are you with me? He saw Christ. 
Are you with me? And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. Listen, I am the first and the last. My God. So now, keep in mind now, and, 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 and I can understand, I can understand to a degree what, what, what John was going through, because when you think about it, he, he, listen, he, he obviously he had difficulty putting all of this in proper perspective because he was so enamored and in awed of what he had seen. Keep in mind, he had saw Christ when he was exiled on the, on the Isle of Patmos, and he had saw the, the, the risen Christ when he had saw Christ, okay? And, and he put his hand on him, and listen, fear not. But then when we come to this 22nd chapter in, in, in verse number 8, and he says, and I, John, saw these things, what, what things is he talking about? What, saw what things? Let's go back to verse 6. And he said unto me, these things are faithful and true. To, to, to see what he saw in the realm of the spirit, okay, he was so enamored, so in awe of all what he saw. Are you with me? And the Lord God of the holy prophets uh, sent his angel to show me his servants, my God, the things which must shortly be done. And, and, and then when we go down to the eighth verse, and he said, John, I saw these things, I heard these things, and when I heard them, listen, and seeing them, I fell down to worship. In other words, John thought he was seeing the Christ again, and he wasn't. Because this was a, listen, this was a messenger. This was an angel. Are you with me? And he says, and I fell down to worship him before the feet of, listen, before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. So he had, he had, he had some difficulty. And if you look at verse, uh, chapter 19 and look at uh, verse number 10, let's, let's look at the 19th chapter and let's look at verse number 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's read that 10th verse. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See, you do it not. In other words, John, don't worship me. See to it that you don't do this. I am, listen to what he says, I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. In other words, uh, you, we, we see in, that, in that, that 19th chapter, John thought he had saw the Christ again. Keep in mind now, he saw Christ in the first chapter. And so as we lead up to this, look at verse 10 again. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, in other words, see to it that you don't do this, John. I'm your fellow servant and brethren. And, 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 it's, and it's obvious here. And keep in mind, he, this, this fellow servant, this brethren, he had a, listen, he had a glorified look to him. Are you with me? And so John thought it was the Christ. And then when we go to the 22nd chapter, guess, guess what? The same thing happens again. Because he says, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and had seen, I fell down and worshiped before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. So it seems that he's about to do the same thing twice. And, and you'll read as we read on down. Listen, this angel tells him or this messenger tells him, see to it that you don't worship me. Do you know I, idolatry is a big problem today? They're, 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 I, 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 I really believe idolatry is a big problem. Idols, idols. People have their, their pastors in idol. They, you, you know, their, their, their denomination they're building their church. They make an idol out of things. Uh-uh. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Let's read on. He says, and, and I, I don't want to seem redundant, but let's read the eighth verse again. And I, John, saw these things. Listen, not only did I see these things, I heard them. And when I heard them and seen them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which had showed me these things. In other words, again, John had difficulty putting all of this in perspective because keep in mind now over in chapter one, he had seen Christ and, and, and he, keep in mind, he, he was on the exile on the Isle of Patmos. He was in the spirit. Are you with me? And, 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 and I can understand to a great degree 
what John was, was feeling or what he was experiencing because guess what? When you, when you see, when you see the, the glory and the presence and, and he, was, he was a messenger, an angel of God, with, listen, with that, with that, with that, that uh, should I, how, can I, how can I say this? With that, uh, that appearance and that look of Christ. Because if you notice, we read in the, one of the verses here, listen, we're going to see his face. Because keep in mind, you won't be able to, the only way that we can see his face then, because we're going to have our glorified bodies. So when you think about all that John had saw and what he had experienced, listen, I, I, listen, I can't, you, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to fault him for the fact that he was, listen, he was about to fall down and worship, but it's like the angel stopped him. Are you hearing me? And then look at verse 9. Then says he unto me, see, listen, this is the second time this has happened with John. See, listen, see, you do it not, my God, which we covered over in the, uh, the, the 19th chapter in the 10th verse. And then we find this happening again with John, because notice what he, he tells him. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets. So obviously he was one of the Old Testament prophets. The scripture does not go in any detail and tell us which one. Hey, guess what? We'll, listen, you stay in faith, make it to heaven, you'll find out. Are you hearing me if you want to know? Notice he's, what he says. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book. So evidently it was one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. And, and so who was waiting for the fulfillment of the prophecies as well. He says, which keep the saying of this book, worship God. God the Father and God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. My God. Then says he unto me, see that you don't make an idol of me. See that you don't worship me. Because I'm not the Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm one of your fellow servants. I'm one of the prophets. Which one? Scripture doesn't tell us. And so we have to, we, 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 we have to keep it at that. As I said earlier, listen, stay in faith and you'll find out which one it is when you get to heaven. Provided you get there, and the only way you're going to get there is stay in faith. Amen, somebody. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. Don't worship your car. Don't worship your house. Don't worship your husband. Don't worship your wife. Don't worship your kids. Don't worship your pastor. Don't worship your denomination. See, don't make idols of that. And, it's, and, if, and if you're not careful, you can make an idol of something. Idolatry. I, idolatry. Are you hearing me, beloved? Uh, uh, I, I, I've seen people make idols of their cars. I've seen people make idols of their homes. I've seen people make idols of their pastors, their bishops, their pastor. Are you with me? Same thing. I've seen people make idols of them. Don't make idols of them. They love them, respect them. Are you hearing me? But don't make an idol of them. Don't make an idol of them. Glory to God. Listen. And then verse number 10, and listen to what he says. He says, and he said unto me, seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book. In other words, the things that are, uh, that are written, that are given in this book, listen, they're faithful, they're true, and they're meant to be known. So don't ever say, uh, I, I would love to read the book of Revelation, but I can't understand it. No, start reading it. The Holy Spirit, listen, through anointing, teaching, and preaching that, that, that God uses through men and women, listen, you, you'll, you'll get a revelation of it. You'll begin to understand it. Don't, don't say, I'm, I'm afraid to read that book. Don't ever say that. Don't ever say, I would read it, but it, it just seems so hard to understand. Don't ever say that. God pronounces a blessing upon those who will read it. Are you hearing me? And, 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 and could, 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 could it be, you, you listen, could it be, could it be you, 
you are squeezing, you are suffocating your blessing because you're not reading the book. Are you hearing me, beloved? And in verse 10, he says, and he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. What, what, what is that? In other words, it's meant to be known and understood. Are you with me? Glory to God. He says, for the time is at hand. The things in the book of Re Revelation are not hidden. They're not hidden. They're for you to know. God wants you to know. A lot of people want to know what the future holds. Read the book of Revelation. It is the only book that gives you a preview of the coming attraction, that gives you a preview of the future, that gives you a preview of what's going to happen. So you have no excuse for not reading it. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. He says, for the time is at hand. In other words, the immediate fulfillment of the events in which he's speaking of. And they're going to happen in consecutive order. The rapture is imminent. The rapture will take place. No one is going to stop. Listen, no one is going to be able to stop the rapture from taking place. No one is going to be able to stop the tribulation from taking place. No one is going to be able to stop the second coming. No one is going to be able, are you hearing me, to stop the millennial reign. No one is going to be able to stop the perfect age. Are you with me? And those things are going to happen, and they're going to happen consecutively. Lee, are you with me? They're going to take place. We've, we've already read it. Verse 6, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and they are true. This going to go down, beloved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. My God. What a time that's going to be. A new Jerusalem. That which God had, listen, that which God had purposed from the very beginning. There won't be any need for a light or candle. There won't be any pestilences. There won't be any plagues. There won't be any more curses. There won't be any of that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And you ought to be looking forward to it. If you want to know what the future holds, read the book of Revelation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm not out of word. I'm just out of time. That's all. Praise God. Not out of word. Just out of time. Praise God. Now listen, we would love to have you visit with us in one of our live services. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, we're located at 12855 Old St. Augustine Road in the Mandarin area. You can't miss us. There's a big marquee out there in the shape of a rock with the cross and a dove overhead. Glory to God. So you can't miss us. Praise God. We would love to have you in one of our live services. And uh, listen, we love you. We trust and pray that you receive something from this teaching on tonight. And uh, it's Bible study. And that's what we're doing. We're studying the Bible. We're studying the word of God. We're in the book of Revelation. And we'll, we'll soon be through, through with this book. And, and we trust and pray that you're receiving something from it. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Glory to God. And, and once you hit it, listen, give us a thumbs up. If it's been a blessing to you, if it's helped you, give us a thumbs up. And then on the share, the share section, go ahead and share it and send it to someone else. Glory to God. Call up your friend, your neighbor, whomever. And uh, uh, let them know. Say, hey, we've got this, this man of God that is, is teaching out of the book of Revelation. If you want to know what the, the future holds, I want you to join in with us each and every Wednesday night. Praise God. So listen, until next time and in between time, listen, stay in faith. Don't allow the mess of the world to pull you into their mess. Are you hearing me? Because the enemy uses natural things in order to frustrate you spiritually. Are you with me? He will use the events and everything else that's going on to make a mess out of you. Don't allow the enemy to make a mess out of you. Don't get pulled into the mess. Are you with me? Glory to God. So until next time, this is Bishop Walker in the Sanctuary of SRC. Listen, glad to have you on tonight. Be blessed. Listen, 
Walk in wisdom. <laughs> Glory to God. Exercise the wisdom of God and stay safe in Jesus' name until next time.